Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of Help with Natalie Cuomo. I'm here today with one of my best friends, Chloe LeBranch. You guys, you guys love her. <laughs> I love her. Today we're going to be covering a plethora of topics. Um, it's been a crazy week. I broke my pinky toe. Oh my god! It was tragic. I stubbed it. I'm going to need some help with that. And um, <laughs> I'm about to. Uh, I'm about to go to Rochester on Thursday. It's going to be very snowy. On top of that, I'm just excited to see Chloe. We always exchange stories with each other. Chloe is an incredible person. She's been in comedy for a long time. She's very funny. And um, I'm also, I'm no longer working with G Fuel. So we are cheersing to some Red Bull today. <laughs> Cheers, Red, Red Bull energy. This is not, I'm not an advertisement because that would be not allowed, but okay. Let's jump into the show. Chloe! What's up? What's up, my bestie? How are you? I'm good. So I've got a couple comments on the intro. Okay. How was the intro? It was really good. You just threw plethora in there. Like a fucking... What do you think? I thought it was like, oh, this girl went to college. You know, she's smart. Thank you. I want to one day have a vocabulary so big that people are like, is she reading a thesaurus? (laughs) Is Is she even... Just DMing only big words. Yeah, like is she is she editing this? Is this even stream of consciousness? Mm-hmm. So plethora well, is how I started. That's honestly what the fans want these days. Their favorite jokes are the jokes that they don't understand. I agree. <laughs> I agree. You know, um, you're on stage and you're just like, oh, and then they just die laughing, and you're like, I didn't even tell my joke. I know it's so weird figuring out like why are people so stupid. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't know if you're supposed to blame the comedians for not being funny or the fans at this point. I know. It's really funny to me. How is your, how have you been? I feel like I I haven't spent, well, the last time we traveled together Yes. was crazy. Dark. It was a dark time. Should we talk about it? I mean, yeah. So I was supposed to open for you at Vulcan Gas. In Austin. In Austin, Texas. It was terrible. When you did it, the room, did you not like it? I liked the room, but the day was terrible. Well, it was dark, but it was kind of, you know, just an off-the-cuff day for me. Like, I booked, like, such a sick hotel, too. You did. The hotel was gorgeous. The line hotel. Your room was beautiful. There was, uh, you gave me a pair of sunglasses. I mean, and that was funny because I spent so much more money on the hotel than I was ever going to (laughs) make. Story of my life. I did that in New Orleans. I just act like I'm famous when I'm not. Me too. I pretend that I'm rich and I'm like, my credit card bill is just there. Yeah. But so I I was at the pool and it was like a day party at the pool. And I was like, Natalie, it was the day of the show. And I was like, you got to come over. And it was probably like noon. And then I were in the pool for the day party like sit standing in the pool and then I have a seizure and I fall underwater and these random people pick me up. I'm like drowning, pick me up out of the water and I'm just unconscious. And then I think the first thing I said was like, I I still can do the show tonight. Yes. And then I asked the uh, EMTs if they wanted to get on the guest list. Yes. (laughs) The first thing you said when you like came to after the seizure was like, we have a show at Vulcan Gas tonight. (laughs) You guys have to come. (laughs) They wrote down the info. Yeah, really? They did write down the info. They wanted to come. It was what happened. You were in the pool and like, you're like a silly person. Mm -hmm. So you were just like standing. You just like fell back into a group of ladies. And I was like, okay, Chloe, you're just like fucking with me. (laughs) I was like, Chloe, what? And then I was like, Chloe, what? (laughs) And then there was like some child standing near me who was like holding my notebook. And I, well, first of all, I should tell the fans so nobody's worried that I have epilepsy. So it's like just the thing that can happen to me at random times. And like I was just on the wrong medication at the time because they're always switching my meds after I have a seizure. So yeah, but I never had one in a pool. That was my lowest seizure. You know what? Nothing makes you realize how much you love your friend until you see them have a seizure and you're like, Chloe, I love you. (laughs) I'm like stroking your back. Chloe. (laughs) Get her a muffin. Get her a muffin. And I'm like, Red Bull. That was crazy. So, okay. Who we'll opened for you that night? I think uh, Ariel Isaac Norman was going to host. So she featured. And then Davey Jax from San Antonio. He like drove. Because I had done San Antonio before. He's like, if you need anyone in Austin. I was like, 
I don't. But then I, I, I do. I messaged him and I was like, I do. And you handed me all of your, um, what are they, animal pillows? What do you call those? My stuffed animals. Yeah, my animal crossing. You started handing me them and I was like holding them. Yeah. I've slowly been getting rid of my stuffed animals because I have a, I have a sick addiction. And you have someone else in the bed. Someone else in the bed and the dog. And they just wind up on the floor. The dog uses them as toys. It's bad. Have you ever had a guy like comment on them and be like, "No, like get these out of my out of the bed"? Um, no. The thing is that they no, but I feel like I understand where to draw the line a yeah. little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I when I was in rehab once, uh, I had brought a stuffed animal. I actually had someone in my family send it to me. Really? I was like, I got to this like really bougie rehab in Malibu and I was like, everyone was just like dressing ridiculous and everyone was so spoiled. And so I like texted my sister and I was like, you need to send me like my Tiffany heart bracelet because it's coming back in fashion. I need like these <laughs> bikinis. I need these like lace shirts and some cut off pants and like earrings and makeup. And because like me and this girl were just dressing like ridiculous. And I remember... We everyone would order stuff from Amazon. Yeah, and we had a, one of the big. There's like three pools, and one of the pools we would throw dry ice in it and blast music. And I pierced all my own ear from down all the way down here, and it was just like blood and crusty. And I was like, I'm because I was on meds. I was like, I'm fine. And <laughs> that's like the scariest thing ever. And we'd wear like the heaviest eye makeup and uh, just dress so slutty. And because the girl I lived with got like all her clothes from Nasty Gal. Oh my God, such a look. I know. And so like, she was this girl named Danielle who had like pink hair, tons of little tattoos, kind of like a Miley Cyrus knockoff. And when I first got there, because I was at a different, I was at the Promises Malib uh, one in West LA. Okay. And I was like, this is not, it was really like gross. And I was like, this is not where I'm going to be. Like, I need to go to the Malibu one as soon as possible. <laughs> and I was like, they put me on like detox meds. They put you on like Valium. So you're so out of it. Like I couldn't walk in a straight line. And uh, so actually when I was detoxing, I, would, I wore this like pink striped pajama set every day. That sounds nice. And like li little velvet slippers. And like I'd wear sunglasses with it. And we'd sit in the detox room and this we'd watch Twilight and me and this one guy there held hands and made out in <laughs> detox. And then I transferred to the Promises Malibu. But before I went, I was still in my pajama set. I told the staff, I was like, listen, before I get to Malibu, I'm going to need to, uh, you need to drop me off at the Sunset Tower in LA, the hotel, because I just need a day or two to think, which just meant I wanted to go there and get like fucked up for two days. And they're like, no. So they took me in this like big black Escalade and in my, in my pajamas, they drove me up the mountains to the Malibu place. Is this story too long? Mm -mm. okay and then i get there and there's this that girl who ended up being my roommate and i'm just like i need a cigarette and she i sit down we don't even shake hands she hands me a cigarette and she's wearing like this lakers jersey with no pants and like no shoes and she was just like so fucking ridiculous and she says to me i said the first thing i said to her was like are there any hot guys here uh-huh she was like yeah, she's like, I am hooking up with this one guy. He's kind of from the other side of the tracks. Like, he's bipolar, so he's, like, super fun in bed. But there is a guy here that's, like, preppy like you, so you would love him. Like, Scott Disick keeps calling him to manage his money. You would love him. And I was like, perfect. Did you feel that rehab was, like, that rehab was a helpful experience? No, I got kicked out. It was a this guy, the same preppy guy had um, his drug dealer, Baby Dog, uh, the baby dog called, he's also a rapper, I guess. Baby dog called him and baby was dog. like, uh, I can't send my kids to summer camp because you're not buying drugs for me anymore because he was such a big client. Do you, okay, if you had a rap name, what would it be? Uh, uh, Young Trauma. Young Trauma! Yeah. What about you? Fuck, Natty Light. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I love that. I like when people say that's funny instead of laughing. <laughs> If you were fat, you would be Natty Heavy. Natty Heavy. <laughs> or Natty Fat. <laughs> Fatty Natty. I feel like, okay, you, rehab sounds like a, a, a stressful summer camp. It sounds like summer camp, but ever, like gone wild. 
it's not stressful in the way that like you don't deal with the real world. It just kind of just puts life on hold hmm. and you don't have to deal with anything. You become literally like a baby back in a womb. Like really? they treat you like a child and it's just like can be so relaxing. But everyone dates in rehab and then they'll like run away together and relapse and it just Whoa. can be really toxic. And a lot of people there, like if you go to a really shitty one, which I ended up at at the end people are like court ordered there so they don't actually want to be sober and a lot of, like I, I went to this last second to last rehab and uh it was like through my insurance and it was so shitty um and uh what like kids people there had been in rehab 24 times and stuff what do you think why do you think it's such like a, a system where people get stuck there because what they do at the rehabs is they'll even tell, like, at the nice ones at the, for the young people, they'll tell their parents, like, if your child relapses and doesn't go back to rehab, they're going to die. So they kind of manipulate the parents, and the, the, it becomes the parents just, like, one parent I remember of a friend spent, like, maybe all of their savings on their kid's rehab. Hmm. And so it just becomes, like, and it also gets addicting. Like, I got addicted to go to rehab. Like, really? every time I would have, like, problems or go on a bender, I'd say, oh, I can just run away. Mm. interesting yeah yeah that makes sense yeah how do you cope with like what do you do now i just go to aa yeah i feel like aa has been really helpful for a lot of people yeah it really has what is it like i feel like i picture like i've never been to aa i feel like maybe you're not supposed to talk about it but i don't care i feel like i picture the scenes in movies where people are sitting in a circle and then they stand up is it like that uh no one stands but it's like sometimes it's circles sometimes it's all like rows and it's just very like um it's kind of like group therapy but without a therapist yeah so sometimes it goes a little wild <laughs> and there's like tons of meetings so you can go to meetings that are like really really dysfunctional and then you can go to meetings that are like really put together and there's people with really good sobriety and have like great jobs. And those are like the most inspiring ones. Interesting. I mean, this is hilarious. So I used to go to this like sketchy meeting at this place called Perry Street, which is very famous. Yeah. Like all celebs used to go there and now it's just kind of like whatever. And uh, there was this homeless guy who would go all the time named Roy. I didn't say a last name, so I'm not adding him. And one time I was walking by Chase Bank in the rain and I was crying and he was outside panhandling and he stops me and he goes Chloe what's wrong and I was like my boyfriend broke up with me and he gave me a hug and Aww. he goes he goes everything's gonna be okay you deserve better <laughs> <laughs> you're like thanks Roy I, it was like just insane I was like what a god moment <laughs> I was probably like do you want a date <laughs> then you fucked Roy yeah yeah oh my god what was your okay so when you were a kid did you know that you wanted to be a comic no what did you want to do i like took myself really seriously yeah i was like really goofy but i took like i had a lazy eye and stuff when i was really little really i and didn't I, know lazy eyes could be corrected uh and i had, yeah you like train it i had to wear an eye patch really when i was in like kindergarten you were a pirate i was Arrgh. but i was also a bully Oh my God, that's what you're like, <laughs> give me your money, I'm a pirate. I would stand on the top of the slide uh, in the playground and only let certain people down. Really? And then when the people I didn't like were on the slide, it was like wood chips all on the floor of the playground. So I'd take all these wood chips and put them at the bottom of the slide. And this girl, uh, Raffaella, one time went down the slide and they got in her vagina. And she had to go to the hospital. How did the wood chips get? Because I would take the wood chips and throw them at the bottom of the slide, and then she slid down, and they went into her vagina. Why do you think you were such a boy? I think um, I was one of seven kids, and I had no control over my life, so at school I could just bully people because I was bullied by my brothers and sisters. Yeah. Like, I remember walking down the stairs to go to school when I was little, and uh, my one of my brothers would go, it had, like, carpet on it, and he would go, dead arm, dead arm, dead leg, dead leg, and I would just slide down the stairs on my back in the morning before school. What do you mean, dead arm? Like, a dead arm was when someone punches your arm and it goes numb. Oh, my like God. Like you never got one? I'm, no. Oh, uh, well, it's a thing. Wow. Were you close with any of your siblings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember one of my siblings, when he used to, like, punch me, like, as a joke, like, dead arms, I would just start yelling, hurt so good, and he would get so mad. <sighs> Do you have that joke about like all of your siblings, like you you put your brother in the closet yes, and yes. pretended there that your house fire. was on fire? Yeah. yeah. Do you want me to tell that story? Well, 
if you want. Yeah, so uh, so I'm I'm one of seven, and uh, we used to do this thing when my parent my parents were like not home a lot. They were always at, like dinner parties and shit because they probably were like fuck these kids, and um, so we would take the youngest. We would like. To, like lock a babysitter in the closet first and then we would take the youngest kid and we would lock him in a closet and then the rest of us would run around the house screaming fire and we'd say where's harrison where's harrison there's a fire and one of us would stand at like the our feet on the door and not speak and he would be like i'm in here oh I'm my god and he'd be banging and we'd be like we can't find him leave him i feel like i'm an only child and i've always been so jealous of people that have big families like i've always been like because like no i have my mom my dad my aunt like those are the people you blood have older related. siblings right I have three stepbrothers, but yeah, like yeah, yeah. I don't, t I don't talk to them. Yeah. My dad only got married four years ago, so it's not like I grew up with them oh, or anything okay, yeah, either. Yeah. So, like, yeah, like one of them, like I've blocked them. Like they're not, we're not friends. Is your family supportive of comedy career? They are. They're super supportive. Were they supportive in the beginning? Yeah, that's so great. They are. They're they're very artistic. Like my dad. He's like an, he was an English teacher. Like he's a, like my room was like a dark room. Like he was a photographer. Yeah. My mom's like an artist she's a landscape architect correct yeah well now she trains dogs oh that's cool yeah don't you remember how your mom and i have a mutual friend you do <laughs> but my parents are they're very like artsy yeah that's so nice they are artsy which i i appreciate but i was always so jealous of people that had si like siblings yeah i had a lot five brothers one sister oh my god are you close with your sister because you guys are the only girls yeah you know we went through a phase when we definitely weren't close when my drinking was really bad yeah um and you know i was and then kind of later on too it got bad again and i just really wasn't there for her to sis as a sister like you know she got married and out of the wedding i was a maid of honor and i got shit faced you know i was yeah. just like really not available but like this next time in our life she got pregnant and i was like sober and just like you know i always see the baby and you know, stuff like that so but it could end any day. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I could start getting on the bottle and... <laughs> no. Yeah, I know. <gasps> How hard is it? Like every day, do you feel like you're making the decision or you think about it? Or do you feel like uh, you feel like you become stronger? So for me, it's like I'll have really good days and I'll go through stretches where I don't even think about drinking. And then sometimes I'll just get like triggered by something, like a breakup or something like that. And I just am like, I need a drink. Yeah. But the more sober time I get, the stronger I am for sure. I feel like we're both, we are both like have a very similar type of brain in the sense that like we kind of like, well, if something upsets us, we'll kind of obsess over it. Oh, of course. Like I feel like it's very hard for me when I, um, I'm worried about something or when I want something or when yeah. I like something to not like overanalyze it yeah. or just think about it incessantly. Mm -hmm. Like what are some ways that you cope with that? Um, some ways I cope with that is uh, none yet. yet. None yet. <laughs> <laughs> Reach out to a different ex. What was the what was the one man show that you just did? One woman, Natalie. One woman show. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, it was called Slow Motion Suicide. It was all about this time when I ran away from that rehab in Malibu. I had to go to a psych ward. Okay. Because I got in, arrested. Whoa. Why did why a psych ward? Because like I was just insane and I was like so depressed after it and so they were just like someone the rehab was just like someone needs to help this girl so i had to go to the psych ward and they said i was going to be there for 72 hours and then it ended up being a holiday weekend and i was stuck there for eight days because they were like you have to see a judge and then it just ended up being like the judge was like busy and so i had to wait and it was just so i kept a diary every single day when i was in there like all day everything and so i did a one-woman show and i read from my actual diary Whoa, yeah, that's awesome. What was something that you were trying to convey like from your from your diary and through your show? What I was trying to convey is that even though I was in a situation like a psych ward where I was, you know, l uh, labeled as someone who is insane, mm -hmm. I was sane at the same time. Yeah. So it was kind of like a juxtaposition. I always feel like there are definitely moments where – like I definitely struggle with my mental health at times and there mm -hmm. are definitely moments where I feel like the moment gets too big. Yeah. Like I catastrophize things, the moment will feel too big 
like I'll feel my emotions take over and I'm like, I don't know how to make this feeling go away. And sometimes I feel like I can't imagine how, I can imagine how in certain situations a psych ward could be helpful for people, but I also can imagine how maybe it would make a situation worse. Like, it can you speak to that? Very traumatic. Yeah. And I would sit in there and I would say, I'm in my room, I'd be like, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. And it was just like the craziest people in there. Um, and it was funny because the beginning, I was just so scared. It was the scared, most scared I've ever been in my entire life. And at the beginning, I like wouldn't touch anything. I didn't speak. Um, I would just be in my room crying. And then by like the fifth day, I was just like, fuck it. And I just like leaned in and I started like go going in the groups and like talking a lot. And it was all the patients would like, just like fuck with the staff. <laughs> all the time and like I just started like playing chess with these crazy people and watching like Harry Potter marathon it was like it was just in it, I don't know it made me think about people on a human level like it was almost like people were at the most barbaric str people were the most human people they were there because they were just like stripped of everything and um you know so it was interesting because it made me very empathetic for people like, I realized that no matter what people label people as, they're still people. Yeah. It was, if that makes sense. Yeah, I feel like there's this idea that, like, it's, I feel like psych wards and mental health is still pretty taboo. Like, mm -hmm. people will talk about antidepressants and, like, medication, and that's kind of becoming more mainstream. But yeah. I think that that like that kind of stuff is still kind of like a pretty unique experience yeah did you feel like people there were like genuinely crazy on and like not crazy but de genuinely like suffering on another level that you hadn't seen before yes yes and then there were also people that there was a few people that weren't but the conversations were insane and this one guy um he said to me he was telling me he was like listen i understand you because like I'm not crazy either. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, I'm homeless. And he's like, so what me and my friends do is we go to psych wards and we say crazy things so they'll let us in so we have a week of like free meals and somewhere to stay. Whoa. He told me, he goes, this time I told them, the voices told me to stab the kids and step on the puppies. He goes, worked like a charm. And I was like, oh my fucking God. Don't you have to pay to be in a psych ward? No, because a, a lot of them are state, they're state run. Okay. Like hospitals. So they just, and so the system is still fucked up in there, you know, but it's, that's what it is. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are some you have to pay for, like really fancy ones, but like this one wasn't. It was at New York Presbyterian Hospital and they like took my insurance in White Plains. How many, like, how many, what percentage of people there do you feel like were there against, like, that didn't want to be there? Uh, I actually don't really know. Yeah. But it's interesting that these people that are labeled as so crazy will go there and seek help because there is something very almost stable about recognizing that you have a problem and seeking help for it. Yeah. Like that self-awareness is something that yes, most people lack. Yes, that's the word, yeah. A hundred percent. So, yeah. That's, yeah, I can't even imagine. What was the response like to your uh, one-woman show? Um, it was good. I did it at the Caveat Theater, which is not too big, but it was like a really rainy Saturday. I did like a matinee because it was all they had, and I was like, no one's gonna come. But like thirty people came, which like made the room seem full, and it was it went really well. That's awesome. Like, it was really fun, super cathartic, and you know a lot of people really liked it. And um, I don't know how, but I really want to put on a run of it but I don't have like anyone to help me. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe I have to like pay a little bit and just book a theater for like a few weeks and just run it. Yeah. Myself. Do you feel like there's a message that like you're trying to send to other people that maybe were struggling the same way that you were in that time? Yeah, I do. What's the, me like, what's the message? The message is that I think at the end of the day, um, people are people and, uh, even if you're labeled as as crazy or something, um, it doesn't mean you are. Yeah. And also, um, it was kind of it was about sobriety a bit because I talked about rehab. Uh, it was like dark, but I made a lot of jokes, 
And, um, yeah, I don't really, I guess I don't really know yet. Your comedy is very, like, dark. Like, you make, you talk about all of the stuff in your act. Like, you talk about suicide, rehab, like, you have some rape joke like you're very like you know how to bring light to dark situations Mm, thank you like you're very good at like laughing in the face of difficulty but what's interesting about that is when I would make some of those jokes when I was very close to the experience Mm -hmm. the audience would get freaked out because they could feel that I was not okay still yeah so I'd have to you know it takes sometimes it would take six months to be away from the problem until it doesn't really bother me and the audience n- will notice and laugh at it because you don't want the audience to be like worried for you. I feel the same way. I feel like I like my album. I talk about like an, an X on the album. Mm-hmm. That's like an X before the last X before. Like that's like it has to be so far removed. Otherwise they can feel it. Like of course they I feel like I, I have to like be so far removed from a problem to yeah. talk about it. But sometimes I like sometimes I want to talk about an issue and then they can just feel that you're still yeah struggling yeah, yeah. i guess that's why we have therapy and yeah friends. <laughs> there's nothing worse than an awe from an audience member oh my god you're just like stop yeah that's uh that's not fun yeah but you're doing an amazing thing by like talking about this it's it's yeah. so it is like brave is the worst word ever but it's not an easy thing to brave is for fat girls well <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I hate the word crazy. I think women are always called crazy and men are never called crazy. And it's always – it's like it it drives me insane. Men are never called crazy. Like you never – men act crazy and they're never called cra- – like, like men are never called crazy. A man is never like sitting alone in his car being like, man, am I crazy? Am I and, crazy? Is there, am I crazy? Yeah. And also men, it's like when they act crazy and then women call them out on it and be like – your narcissist makes women love to say like you're gaslighting you know it's our new favorite word men will be like oh my god she's just using a word she just learned yeah and i dated a guy i remember that guy yeah and he like very much love bombed me and then i called him out on it at the end and i was like you said i love you to me and you wanted to marry me and stuff and he goes you're delusional it's crazy yeah it's crazy it's like you said exact words that you didn't mean i think people i think people say things that they don't mean when you call them out on it they just don't know what to do with Mm -hmm. it and then he goes good luck with your career which is my joke (laughs) (laughs) why is that your joke i just like say it to every comic when they're leaving a show i was go i go good luck with your career (laughs) i say to everyone do you like doing comedy in new york city the best yeah why um it's just like it's i just like it uh, well you know actually like if you go when when i've gone on the road a few times um i loved chicago okay and philadelphia you yeah. know they had great audiences i felt austin is a little bit it's very liberal very it's very like woke yeah which is not my comedy yeah but i mean i guess if if you get good enough at comedy you can kill anywhere which is the goal. I, I feel like that's the cool thing about traveling is like you learn how to appeal to different audiences and you're like, whoa, people live in these different ways. Like I think being on the road sometimes, I'm like, holy shit. Like I yeah. did not know parts of America like even looked like this. Do you change up your act if you are in different parts? Um, no, not no. I mean, no, I, I feel like I've, I'm just focusing on like writing stuff right now that's not relationshipy because I feel like I spend so much I I always spend so much time talking about relationships in my act and now I'm excited I just like wrote some new stuff that's kind of about like mental health I just wrote like a new joke about like Yay. this time I got reiki and I tried it last night and it worked and I was like okay Hell yeah. cool but I feel like I'm sort of I I ha- I feel like I was feeling pretty stuck the last few mm-hmm. weeks and I wrote a couple new premises that I feel happy about Last night I was like, yay. But that feeling is so, like, that feeling comes and goes. Yeah, it's so hard for me to, like, sit down and write. And then sometimes I'll just get, like, a wave of being able to do it. And I can write, like, seven jokes or ten jokes in a row. And then I won't write again for months. Yeah, but then those are the jokes that you're working on those whole, all of those months and, like, adding yeah. tags to. But then, like, you know, of those, like, maybe three will work. But I'll just be really stuck to the ten of them and then keep trying to work them. And I just need to drop them. 
you're someone that's always adding tags. So like you're always like watching someone else's set, thinking about tags, thinking about how something could be a joke. Like in a conversation, you're always like, oh, that could be a joke. I remember like we were talking once how I was like, I feel like I can't send nudes because I have tattoos and they're recognizable. And you're like, that's a that's a good premise. That's a good joke. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. And then I never was able to like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it funny on stage. But it's true. I feel like I can't. It's sometimes it's so hard. Like in convert, I feel like I'm so much funnier in off stage than I'm on stage. Really? Yeah. Like it just it's very uh, hard. I guess it's because I aren't I'm not at the level where I have my voice yet. I'm still working on getting building my voice in stand up. So sometimes I'll almost get self conscious. So I'll I'll use a, a joke or be on stage and kind of um, hold back or say something like more defensive of the joke instead of saying the real thing. Yeah, instead of just trusting yourself and being like, this is, you know, I would just literally just listen to like this, I this little tiny clip on Instagram in the car where Louis was saying like, it was like Louis on Joe Rogan, yeah. where he said that uh, Adrian Appalucci, she had this joke and then afterwards she would like do like, it was like a very edgy joke. Mm -hmm. And afterwards she would do like a little laugh after at first and it was like, it didn't work as hard, be work as well because like the audience could feel her insecurity. But like when she stopped, he was like, don't do that. And when she stopped doing that, it like all her confidence was there and they're like, wow, she really means it. And like, and yeah. I'm like, I was like, wow, should I start listening to Rogan? I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to laugh at all my own jokes when I first started. And then I I was told to stop, but sometimes I, I do by accident. And also, I kind of feel like the key to comedy is timing. Yeah. So if you throw in, if I throw in pauses, the joke just hits so differently. Same. I also talk so fast. And I'm like, if I trust myself and go slowly with it, I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. But it's so scary to trust yourself and be mm -hmm. like all right i'm up here i'm in control okay yeah yeah, yeah 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 what's going on i broke my pinky toe on dan's birthday how his whole family was over and uh like he has all four grandparents his aunt his uh, i got none i know same <laughs> and uh i just was he has this like wait sorry that's very good genes natalie i know it's crazy congratulations he does his parents are young he has young parents how old like they're in their 50s and my parents are 60s. like in their 70s 60s. Minor, like, yeah late 60s yeah so um your pinky toe at the birthday yeah there's like a column like that and well it's like goes to the floor and <laughs> i i just ran past it wearing socks and i stubbed my toe i started like hopping up and down oh. and i was like oh that hurts yeah and Ugh. like he was even in the bathroom so his whole family's like why is she hopping <laughs> the but, grandparents there okay and then uh i i looked later the whole toe was purple Ugh. I can't even post a picture of my fucking toe because everyone's a creep. I hate that. Why are toes sexualized? You could probably get OnlyFans with that and make a shitload of money of a bru bruises. But then I feel like I'm being like, I'm like, if I post a picture of my toe, I feel like I'm, I'm being like. Well, Natalie, you don't have to share everything. I do. You can keep some things to yourself. No, I feel like everyone needs to see my toe. Maybe you need to wait six months till you're apart from it and you could do a before and after. Guys, it's been six months. <laughs> the first time I ever broke a bone. What? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I've broken so toe. many. Really? I broke, when I was little, I broke my arm in half right here. So I was playing soccer and it went behind my back and I fell. When I was, um, when I was in high school, I broke my leg on a trampoline. And um, I've broken wow. both my wrists and just a lot of fingers. When I was in college, I was like on, I was on EMS. I was such a, I was like on the emergency medical squad. I was uh, an EMT. <laughs> sick though it was cool but i was like wait where'd you go to school bard oh cool upstate, upstate. yeah that's a, i heard that store school's fun it was it was fun i was pretty i was like very anxious when i went i feel like i didn't like i feel like it was just so anxious yeah. and like the first year of my college i feel like it was a very drug heavy school yes yes i've it's heard like that very drug heavy but it's so, really small right it's small so like 
in my like 11th or 12th grade I had like a bad trip on hallucinogens mm-hmm. so I'm already like thinking I don't like hallucinogens at all like it was such a bad trip and then this was just like a very hallucinogen packed school yeah and everyone like was losing their minds <laughs> like they were just like crazy like because they were like this is good for my art or something I don't even know like there was this kid he went to middle school with me and mm-hmm. he got uh, he got kicked out in the first week because he did too much acid and he was just like yeah he was just crazy then then there was this other guy his name was like acid drop alex (laughs) and like one time we were like sitting in class and we're all just like sitting in a circle and he just like gets up in the middle of class brings me a piece of paper the paper is a drawing of a naked girl on the toilet (laughs) and it said natalie shit your brains out Oh my god! I know, and I was just like <laughs> traumatizing. I was like, "You're like, has he been watching me?" I'm like, "It looks just like me." <laughs> and then afterwards, I was like, "Hey, Alex, are you okay?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm just always tripping." I was like, <sighs> "It was just like so, like so." Anyway, I joined EMS, and like all of the calls were like people that were too drunk, people that overdosed. It was just like. Oh too God. much. It was just like too much. Yeah. Or like on Fridays they had classes for old people. Mm-hmm. So it was like an old lady that was bleeding out of her head. I was mm. just not. It was too much for me. Yeah. But anyway, they had this thing because it was such a hippie school. It's called the Cirilla Circus every year, where basically people were just naked, juggling fire and being psychopaths <laughs> and just like on drugs. And I was like, I'll be on call for the Cirilla Circus. Cool. Yeah. And then this girl, she. She broke her knee naked on a trampoline. Same. And I was just like, cool. I was like at the trampoline with this fucking girl. Just like, there's fireworks going off. She's naked, like my knee. And I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) What did you um, study there? What was your major? Environmental science studies. Yeah. Yeah. Was that a popular one there? Um, meat. Eh. Yeah, kind of doing a lot of people study like fine art or it's it's a pretty artsy school. Yeah, it's like arts. I guess environmental. I there don't, was like I don't a, know anything about that. So. It's not like a. I thought I was gonna like work on a farm. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you a question yeah. that's not related to this. Okay. So when I date guys, yeah, um, you know, if we date for a while, like I get really close with their families, and my family was like a bit dysfunctional, and my parents were, you know, kind of like not present, you know, mm-hmm. as much. But they're really great people. But um, anyway, so I'll get close to these families, and a lot of people I date. They have very, like, functional childhoods and families. And it's like, I'm like, I get to join a new family. Yeah. Does, does that happen to you with, like, this new guy? I don't know if I could say his name. Dan? We can say his yeah, name. Yeah, Dan. Like, do you feel like that? Because he has, like, all, I just, you know, you said he has all his grandparents. So I feel like everyone's around. Absolutely. I feel like this is amazing. Like, yeah, of course. I'm like, I have, I, I love joining his family. It's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course. I feel like I'll be in a relationship with someone and you get close with their family and it's like, it's cool because you didn't grow up with it's funny because i had i had like lunch with my aunt and my mom mm-hmm. and it's so dysfunctional because it's my dad's sister yeah okay. and my parents are divorced yeah, yeah, I know. so it's like me my aunt and my mom yeah and we're literally and i'm like telling her about dan's family i'm like i love his family i'm showing pictures of like his grandparents I'm like look how cool his family is yeah and my uncle died and she was really close with my uncle's family okay and she and we're like going off like comparing how cool it is to be part of a family while yeah. we're all sitting together and i'm like this is so sad like <laughs> that our family because <laughs> we're like technically the family but like <laughs> we're all like being like look at this family i'm a part of like yeah. what? and she's like showing pictures she's like this is where i was on christmas showing like some random family that invited her yeah. and it's like it is true that like it's so it's like family is thing that i think a lot of people take for granted like when you don't have that it's so nice when someone welcomes you into their family and it's yeah. really a special thing it's like you're never in a relationship because someone's family welcomes you in but when they do it's like a very beautiful thing especially when like that you don't have that yeah well what they say is when you marry someone you also marry their in-laws or the in-laws right. so. the thing is so on Wednesday, me, Dan, his dad, and um, his mom all went to the tattoo shop, and me, him, and his dad got tattoos. What did his dad get? A, a son with a his uh, with a lion's face in it. Were they ever into tattoos? No, it's his first tattoo. Are they um, kind of uh, what are, are the parents? I don't know how to say it. What's the word? Are they like? 
straight edge people? They're pretty, they're open-minded. Okay. They're very open-minded people. And Dan is getting, he had no tattoos. I remember when like at the stand I was hanging out with him and all of a sudden we were just smoking cigs and he's just like, I think I'm going to get a sleeve. Yeah. And he's, he's like, I have zero tattoos though. And then he, he just started getting some. He had three little tiny ones, and now he's... Like an egg or something. Yeah, he had an egg. <laughs> he had an egg, and now he's really... Which, I'm like, it's not my fault. Yeah. But I like tattoos. Do you, Natalie? Yeah, I do. I didn't I didn't notice. <laughs> I like them. I think they're fun. I mean, I have, I have three. Four. You do. You have the Prada one. You have the one with Hopper. Yeah, I have the yeah the Prada one, the ghost emoji, oh, ha ha, no. my butt. Oh, he has one of you. Never mind. Yeah, he has my podcast logo, Close Show, which I never do this podcast. Um, when I have it, I have about two hundred listeners. And <laughs> <laughs> sorry, you never got to do it. <laughs> but you know what? That that makes me think people will say like, I don't want to do it. I have two hundred listeners. But it's like if you were doing a show and there are two hundred people in the room, you'd be like, this is fucking dope. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've never built it because I would go to rehab, so I would do it for like three months and then just stop for months. Yeah. And you know, people would like DM me and be like, where's the podcast? so you know uh it and i do love just chatting with people like this is so fun yeah and i've made so many great friends in the community yeah so it's easy to talk i agree i was like saying today i was like i'm so glad i have chloe on today because i can just like relax she's a good friend mm -hmm. sometimes i feel like i'll have like if i have someone on a pot on my podcast like either i'll do like that i don't know i'll like either do like a lot of research and know exactly what i'm going to talk to mm -hmm. them about or I won't, and I'll just kind of have an awkward conversation. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I've had conversations where the people are like, don't you have anything prepared? And I'm just like, well, didn't you do anything with your life? Because <laughs> <laughs> we're doctors. <laughs> Wait, so now that you're in a, like, now that you're engaged and in a mm -hmm. very serious relationship and you said all of, most of your old comedy was about other relationships and maybe, like, breakups and stuff like that, do you feel like... Your comedy, obviously now it's probably going to evolve because you mm -hmm. said you want to talk about something else. But do you feel like it's easier or harder to do to make new jokes when you're with someone else? <laughs> I feel like it's so loud in there, Brian. But that's fine. Is he on phone calls? And no, it's fine. What is that? What do you have? A, do you have you're a too popular? Do you have a Tamagotchi in there? Why don't you put your phone on silent? It is on silent. So why does it make noise? I don't know. I don't think it's on silent. <laughs> um, I feel like, you know, I feel like I have some jokes about him, but I feel like it's easier to talk about other things. Yeah. Because um, for the first time, I feel like it is. Yeah, that's what I was curious about. I don't know. Why. I think because usually when you joke about something, it's because someone's like doing something wrong. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, I'm just like, if I ever think of a joke, all the jokes I have about guys were kind of like, they did something like, negative. fuck them. Yeah. Yeah. So. But you don't want to be like, fuck you to the person I'm dating anymore. Totally. And even if I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and I also don't want to like, <sighs> I don't know. I'm trying to just move away from being, I just want to be like, I want to like explore like who I am. And I'm like, yes. why am I on stage? Like, why do I, like, why am I doing this with my life? Like, what do I have to say? Is mm -hmm. what I have to say, like, I sucked a dick. Like, exactly. a little bit. I did suck a dick. <laughs> just but the also, tip. <laughs> just the tip. But also, like, I have other shit to say, too. Like, I, Yeah, I agree. I, so, should we do the tarot cards? I don't know what you do it on. Sorry for asking so many questions. No, no, I just, I haven't seen you for so long, so I'm asking so many no, questions. Ask the questions. Um, should we do it based on that guy who's DMing me? Yes. Should I show you the DMs really quick? Yes. Let's make up a name for him. Like we used to do for someone else? Let's make it. Let's watch it. Oh, no, I did be. that with Tori Piskin. We called a guy Richard. Oh, I like the name Richard. You know what? I was watching an old episode of Shark Tank last night with Sir Richard Branson. So what a character okay, he is. Scroll down from here. Okay, so this is your DMs with Charlie. <laughs> I don't think there is a comic named Charlie. Okay. A lot of emojis. Emojis, emojis. Okay. You just said hello. Yeah. I said hello. My fan told me to do that. What's up? Nothing. Just got home. Same. Oh, you asked where he lives. lives. He lives here. Because I thought he, he lived in know that. another place. And you thought he lived in um, Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I love that for you. We got an LOL. Uh-huh. 
Okay. Thank you for analyzing all of this. You said, do you like Viking shows? <laughs> I'm really good at Why Viking shows? I'm obsessed. You do. You are. He even really he hasn't watched any. You have. He has to check them out. <laughs> but then, okay, so at first it seems like a casual conversation, except for the fact that at 12, 19 a.m. you respond to your story. Uh-huh. That seems like something. Yeah, and he likes my other stories, but it doesn't show up in the DMs. Come hang at the stand this week? Possibly. <laughs> Emoji. <laughs> You're so funny. Okay. Okay. I love that you asked about that show at the end. Well, and I also said, where do you... I showed it to Karen Fian, and I, she goes, you asked him, where do you live? <laughs> no, that makes sense. I think it makes sense to ask someone, like, what state they live in. You're like, is this worth my time, or are you not local? My last guy was in fucking Texas. If you're not local, this is not worth... Like, I hate long distance. We're not distance. doing this. We're like, you're, you're busy. You're busy. You're not like, we're not... I, I mean, so he does respond to the stories. Like, that doesn't show in the DMs. It doesn't DMs. show in the DMs, but he hearts them all. That's how it started. He started hearting my stories. Like, So why ago. him? He's really talented. I feel like um, you have an affinity for short comedians. And I don't, short, skinny, little. Are you kidding me? You know my number one. There's nothing short or skinny about him. No, there's not. <laughs> I feel like you were like, I couldn't get the big and large, so I'll get all the short and skinny. Well, no, they, he's not big and large. They work together. I feel, okay, here's my honest opinion. I shouldn't be talking about this. Nothing matters. It's probably not, the camera's probably not even on. (laughs) I think he's too little. I think he's too little. However, if you like him, what do you like about him? I like talent. You think he's funny? Yeah. People think he's funny. I think he's going to be a star. Here's my question for you. I really, I'm curious. Do you think people book people to open for them if they think they're funny or if they think uh, they're funny enough, but I'm definitely funnier than them? I think it depends on the comic. I think if a comedian is so, has such a fan base, they actually really do want to help other comedians because they know what it's like and they also want to spend time with someone who's funny and someone who they like. Because on the road, you have to hang out with them. I feel like some comics won't book someone to open for them if they're super funny. Like if you're yeah. super funny, like they, you're not going to get booked as an opener That's, because yeah. you're, they're not going to want to. But the is, show, after the show, let's drop names on that one. But anyway, I feel <laughs> that. Um, okay, you, you like because he's funny. Do you th- find him to be physically attractive? I like his outfits. What what does he wear? He's like preppy but hipster. Preppy but hipster. So like a cuff jean, a beanie. No, 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 no. He'll, no. He wears like a like a vintage Patagonia with like a sweatshirt that says like some football team. Oh, that is a preppy hip, a vintage prep. You know. So okay, do you would you prefer to date a comic or a non comic? I do kind of think I've dated mostly non-comics. I never dated a comic. And, you haven't, uh, huh? I went on a couple of days. And um, you're attracted to talent. I know that about yes. you. When someone's funny, you you are very attracted to that, which is because mm-hmm. you love comedy. I, yeah. t- I get that. But I think I was, I was like in this phase recently after you know who, the guy in Texas who had like a stepdaughter, I mean a daughter. He's and, nutty. And, you know, he, it was very like, we're going to get married. like, And it was just very intense and uh home home like i don't know the word but um now i'm at a phase where i actually realize like i don't want to date someone normal or like get married right now or have a kid because i think that will really hold me back from my career and we so, talked about this the last episode you were so on. Yeah. i think it would be fun to date a comic just for even a little bit not yeah. marry them obviously but date them for like a little or hook up with them because then your life just becomes comedy right and i could really go in that lane that's fun. That's what I think I need right now for like two years. Or like okay. a year. All right, we're good. What is your vibe with this person in person? Um, only hung out with them once. We only spoke once. Every time at the stand when I would walk by, um, I'd never give time of day. And he would just be like, hey, Chloe. And I was like, oh, hey, what's up, dude? And we'd awkwardly hug. And then at uh, Skankfest, 
we were on acid and I was just walking outside smoking a cigarette and he was just sitting on a ledge and I just sat on the ledge with him and we just like smoked cigarettes and just like talked about the world. But there was no attraction. It was just like, just a hang. we both were like, oh, you're cool. You're cool. And then like, you know, we s- parted ways. Now, the last message you sent to him was interesting. Because I don't even remember it. Y- 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 oh, I said make a wish, kids? No, you said, when are you going to have me on this thing? Oh, that was a joke because... Oh, yeah. So he runs a show With now. With someone that you... I used to do it. He took your old place yeah. running a show. Yeah, that I had a difference with the person, so... So that's funny. I hope he's... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, thanks for listening. I like this. I like that way we broke this down. Um, You're the best. <laughs> Okay. It's funny when we're at shows and we see one of us texting like incessantly, either like upset or laughing. And you're like, and we both we both see each other. And I walk over. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. And then you come over and you're like, Chloe, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I like analyzing your texts. Thank you. All right. So this is going to be about this poll is going to be for Chloe. And this is going to be about not just him. Yeah, great. It's going to be about... I don't even really... I don't care about this person. Yeah, no he's offense. just kind of... he your, your love life in general, what you're looking for, what's mm. coming up, what's on the horizon. What do you need to hear right now uh, in regards to romance? Help, Natalie. Help with Natalie. Would you like to put some energy into the deck? Shuffle those cards a little bit? Sure. <sighs> My armpits... So I I actually... I need to buy deodorant. I do ran out. Have your antidepressants... Do they make you sweat a lot? Sometimes in just one armpit. Well, in the night, I get night sweats. Oh my god, I hate that. Every night. Every night? I think I I'm, I am gonna see a doctor, but I do think like I, there's something wrong with me. Like every night, I w- wake up and it's just soaked. Do you have anxiety? You think when you sleep? What are your do you have dreams about certain things? <laughs> well, apparently, I, I said I did talk in my sleep the other night, which is embarrassing. What'd you say? I can't say it on the podcast. It's so <laughs> funny. All right. What does Chloe need to hear about her love life? I love this. Okay. Oh. Wow, wow. Wow. This looks like a prince. Wow. This is a... A six of... It looks like some branches. (laughs) La branches. Six of la branches. It's a six of la branches. What does the middle one represent? Something specific or no? Like past, present, is that how you do it or you just do it like? I am I am just pulling one card. Oh. Just to be, should I do a past, present, future? No, 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 no. We're just no, going to no. do one card. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, kind of yeah. see what the vibe is. Yeah, yeah. Nothing too crazy. Nothing, you know, we don't have the, you know, if you There's want not more, that many DMs. If you want a more in-depth uh, reading, comment below and we'll start doing that on Patreon. And people can pay you. Oh, they do pay on Patreon. <laughs> Subscribe to the Patreon. All right, I'll where are we? What do you want to see on Patreon? What do you want to give us money for? <sighs> okay. Oh, they're wands. Yes. All right. Whoa. Let's see. Wands. The six of wands. This is good. I'm scared. Chloe's love life. This is a card of victory and optimism. In its upright meaning, I like to think of the six of wands as a journey to success that is just within reach, or in its most positive aspect, a celebration of recent his- a victory. Okay. It reminds me of the chariot, but being a minor arcana card, I think of it more as a representation of our small daily successes, like the little DMs. Mm, it's important to note that the knight's journey is not, see, this is a knight on a horse coming to you. Oh my God. That's what we have here. I don't really know if this guy's a horse guy. He's not a horse guy. You're a horse girl. I am, I am. You're a horse girl. Um, It's important that the night's journey is not yet done. It's an optimistic one, a battle won in war. His, his, it's not it's Remember not I said done. something about the Vikings? The Vikings. The battles. Reverse the card. Okay. It's not a reversed. We don't need that so. shit. This is good. So it's this is a knight. Are you the knight? This, the, there is a knight in shining armor, and he's coming. Wow, that's beautiful. We just need to figure out if he's the one, if he's the knight. I'm not, I don't want the one yet. No, no. I just want someone on the path. You just want someone so on the path? So I can learn. This is similar. So I feel like this is, this is just 
this is good. It's a little optimism. I think this is very good. I need that in my life. Do you feel like you're able to have like casual? Like I'm not someone that can have like casual Absolutely sex. Absolutely not. Like I can't. Actually, I've had it with a f- like few people, and I've just been amazed. Really, Only it's a good. Few people, I'm just like, well, because I'm just like gross, and um, so I've been like amazed by that. But I have never been able to have like a casual relationship. But I, this is, I want to try to do that. Yeah. So it could just end in flames. With anyone, I'll do it. <laughs> that guy, that guy, Roy. Roy, the homeless guy. Roy. I honestly, I feel like I have an optimism for you. Thanks, Natalie. This, this, this guy. He's responding to your stuff. He's got the subtle emojis. Some might call it game. When a guy doesn't show interest, they call it game. Sometimes. You think he's not showing interest? He is showing Your interest. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he is showing interest, but he's not outwardly flirty. He is flirty. He's Karen says he's shy. I don't really know him. I just know people I are don't like know him. He's funny. He's small. And when I see him, he goes sometimes, or sometimes he goes. In our group chat, you know my group chat. Yeah. I asked. I was like, "You guys like this kid?" And everyone's like, three, two people said he's the man." People like him a lot, but I've never. No one sees him as like a romantic figure. No. Which no. could be good for you. No You're just. No I one think, sees us as. No I'm kidding. I think that like. I feel like you need to, like, you know. Explore. You're a catch. Thank you, Natalie. You're fucking Chloe LeBranch. You're beautiful. You're funny. You got all this shit going on. He should be like, just Chloe. He should be stalking me. He should be, like, listening to this being like, I pray to God this is about me. Yeah. 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 I mean, kind of how I feel. You, I remember I texted you when you got engaged or, and I said to you, like, um, this um, brings me so much hope. Yeah, that you after what we've been through, we've been through some, we've been through similar things, and after what we've been through, I was like, it brings me so much hope that you found like true love. Yeah, remember? I feel like that. You know what? I feel like that element of friendship is so important for us. Like the fact that you guys like hung out, skank fest, you just like talked, like that kind of like friendship and forming that connection. You kind of like figure out who the person is first weren't you a really good friend you started being friends with dan first yeah really we were like friends. we were friends first like i remember one- during our patio nights yeah yeah i even like one time i went on a date with someone and i remember like telling them about dan and being like dan's my really good friend well blah, blah. like we're all like and like he texted me like i i remember specifically getting a text from him being like i hope your date went well like you deserve to be treated the best and i was like wow this guy's so nice yeah i know right he's and- like i would drive to jersey for you i can't believe this guy doesn't drive to jersey for you yeah. i'm like Oh, I get it. Good. But you deserve the best. I feel like things are good things are coming. Thank you. I got a lot of help here today. Literally coming. Good things are literally coming. Sex joke. Well, thank you and I got the help I needed from Natalie. Where can people find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Chloe LeBranch. I'm at the stand a lot. Uh, I have I'm headlining a sh- club in Boston, Nick's Comedy Stop. Oh, I, I yeah. headlined the uh, the other one before, but this is a different one, and I'm, that's in March. Um, and you know, I don't really have anything else going on. That's and I'm awesome. Gonna, wait, I'm going to start doing my one woman show, slow motion suicide. So check for that on my Instagram. Hell Ooh, yeah, that was the most plugs I've ever done. That was amazing. Thank you. And uh, as always, uh, like, comment, subscribe, patreoncom slash Como. On the road, I've been. I've been following people around with a camera and like taking all of these videos. I put mm-hmm. them together. I take like six hours. I put them together. I make a behind the scenes video. They get like 15 views because they're, you know, people, they're only on my Patreon, but I work so hard on them. So it's only $3 to join. Join my Patreon. Watch these behind the scene videos. I'm singing in the car. Mm-hmm. I'm interviewing random people. I'm eating things that I don't want to eat. Just watch the videos. Thank you guys so much. 